What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Wave Magnetic back with another tutorial for you. Mm, today, I'm gonna show you how I mastered my song "Take No Prisoners." Um, I have a very specific way that I go about doing the master chain and how I go about just finishing songs. You know what I mean? I'm about finishing songs fast and not taking all damn year to do it. Cause I mean, you can spend forever trying to finish a song, and you just gotta make decisions to uh get the master done and i know mastering can be like nerve-wracking because the very last part but just have confidence that you know what sounds good you know what i'm saying and compare tracks all right so if you like the video if you learn something new make sure you hit the subscribe button below and hit the notification bell so that you'll know when i have new videos coming out and also hit the like button that helps send this video out to new people youtube will share it with more people who may um benefit from this information so i'm gonna get right to it all right here we go so when i do my mastering i actually do it in the track itself in the mix track a lot of people suggest that you don't do that they want you to bounce it out and then put it in a new session and then master it that's not the way i roll I get things done faster here because sometimes you got to make adjustments, all right? So I mix through my mastering chain, all right? So first thing I do after I get all my levels, uh, by basic levels, just a basic balance, this is before any EQ and compression, uh, I go to my master, I put Pro Q 2 on there, okay? I put a Pro Q on there. And I do a cut at 25 hertz. I guess this is almost 26 hertz. Uh, but it's a low cut, a 72 dB per octave. You can go all the way up to 96. But I always do mine at 72. Why? I don't know. It sounds good. Um, let's see here. I uh, do the linear phase kind because when you do, um, let's see. If you do zero latency or natural phase, it sounds weird when you do this cut. Um, something about the linear phase makes it sound okay because if you're gonna do this do it in linear phase mode because otherwise it's just not gonna sound good then after that I put the glue compressor on here this is almost every track I always do some kind of uh, SSL compression on my tracks um, I put uh, you know what let me do it this way let me turn off this stuff and just put them on one by one all right, so this is what it sounds like with just the low cut. Without it. So if you notice, it brings it a little bit more in the focus at the bottom end. It doesn't do that much, but it brings a little bit in focus and it cuts off all the low end stuff that I don't need. The next thing I do is put this compressor on. So now this is a glue compressor. It is a um, emulation of an SSL bus compressor. So when I do this, I always put the side chain on, okay? So with the side chain, I'm making it so that the EQ doesn't react to any, I mean, the compressor doesn't react to anything below 66 hertz, all right? Because I don't want the low, low, low bass and the low end of the kick drum to be uh, pushing the song, just hitting that compressor and just making everything pop like that. Um, I want it to a little bit, uh, but I don't want it to be completely about the low end like that. So let me do that on and off. So if you notice, it put a little bit more, a little bit more um, point on the uh, on the drums, and it just brings everything into focus more. Okay, I always let the attack to be thirty, because you know you can go all the way down to 0 0.01, but I always do it at thirty milliseconds here, and the release I either set it to point two or point one. It depends on the tempo of the song. This is kind of a slow song, so I put it at point two, and it seemed to breathe with the with the track. All right. So the next thing I do is I put EQ on here. Okay, 
I use, this is the same thing I use every time. I put the EQP1A on there, the T-Rex one. Um, it's, and I do the exact same setting every time. It's kind of crazy. So the, I put it the low frequency thing, uh, at 60. I turn it up three to, what is it? Three. And then, ah, put it back. Three. And uh, I have this set to 12K. I put this between eight and nine, around there. And I boost it 3.2. And then I mix through it. So let's listen to it with and without it. Really simple, it gives you a little bit more umph, a little more body in the low end, and it gives you a little bit of sparkle on the top so it gets a little bit clearer, okay? And it adds a certain amount of distortion because the T-Rex one is special, it has a certain vibe to it. So now, the next thing I did was, this is the uh, Ozone uh, Imager, okay? So, this you can have up to four bands. Some people use this to make their tracks wide. I use this to get rid of low end that I don't need in the sides, okay? So technically, I guess kind of I'm making it wider, but really I'm making the low end narrow so the song appears more wide. Because you don't really need any low end below like 100, 150 hertz. It's not necessary and it gets in the way of subs because subs are always in mono when you're playing in in uh, big clubs. It's always a mono sub. So if you got stereo bass, that sub is going to just disappear once you put it on a big speaker. And then you're gonna be wondering why people like dancing to your music, you feel me? So, mm, I take the low end, 142, right here, I just turn it all the way down. So let's hear with and without. So if you see again, it just brings things a little bit more into focus, okay? So now, this right here is a heavy lifter, right here, okay? This is special because I do this in mid-side mode, all right? So again, I'm mixing through this right here. I, I put this on early on in my mix. So once I get my balance and everything, I put all those other plugins on. Now I use the exciter. So it's a multi-band exciter. I use the same settings, but I change this up a little bit. I just do the same places. So the high band, I always have it at around 8K. The low band, I always have it up to 200 Hertz. Now this is where it changes sometimes. I have this, what I do is I solo the track, I solo that particular band, and I move it around until I hear the low end of the, I want to say it, when I hear the lowest part of the main melody, so that could be, in this case, it's the trumpet. If it was a vocal, it would be the vocal. <clears throat> I, look, I put this till I hear the bottom end of the clarity area of that sound. So when I'm listening, I'm listening for the low, lowest point of the vocal or trumpet or whatever uh, that gives clarity and that's where I stop. So listen to this. See, that's what I'm listening for right there when I do that. And that's how I set that. And the rest of them are all based off of that because that's the main, that's the money maker right here, okay? So I always set this to retro here. I always set the top one to retro. And I always set this to dual mono and dual mono. Now, if you notice, I have this in mid side mode. So this is the mid section. And here's the side section, okay? So basically, I turn this up until it sounds clear to me. And I do the same thing here. So I boost this up, I bring it, and then I do use the, the mix control until it just feels right, until it feels the right amount of clarity. And then same thing here, the low end, I boost this up. It's all based on feel. There's no setting 
exact setting here that's going to get your mix to be dope okay you got to go by feel it, it this is where it felt good on this all right so then on the sides i use the tape setting on all of it okay um and i make it i use this to make my tracks wide okay i make it so that i can get the tracks as wide as i want them to be or as narrow as i want them to be all right so now I start boosting on here again. This is about clarity and width on, the, on what I'm doing. This is more so about width, well, width and clarity here. And then the money maker is here. If you mess with this low end, this uh, mid band, you can mess with this on, and this will make your track sound really wide. Listen to this. Crazy, right? So. This one, this little band right here really gets you, gets that width on your tracks. So play with it, make it, make it be right for you, okay? So then, after I, when I turn this on, this is gonna get really loud, so you might wanna turn your speakers down some, okay? Uh, so now, this right here is what, after I've done my whole mix, now I'm gonna throw some limiting on here. All right, first thing I do, Vintage limiter. I always use the modern section, the modern part. And then I turn this up. Now, this is interesting because with um, with the vintage limiter, you can't really see what how much gain reduction you're getting on it. This is kind of one of the things I don't like about this plugin. Um, it's hard to tell how much if you if you do use the vintage limiter and you see 3 dB of game reduction coming you're really getting like 10 dB of game reduction it's really crazy uh, and if you see like 1 dB you're getting like 6 so you shouldn't even see a number so check it watch what it does See, every once in a while you see a 0.1 or a 0.2 or something like that. That's like 3 to 4 dB of gain reduction that you see in. <clears throat> and even though it only says 0.1. It's kind of weird. But that's what I'm rocking with with that, okay? And then from there, I turn on the maximizer. Now, it seems out of whack, but I do that. And then I get my level to be exactly the way I want it to be. I Most of the time, I'm using IRC3 because it sounds good. And I usually turn it on the crisp section. So most of the time I'm either using crisp on IRC3 or I'm using IRC4, okay? And that's transient or modern, it depends on the track. But most of the time I'm here and that's where I'm at on this one. So now I just turn this up until I get to the game reduction I'm looking for. You see, it was getting like 4 dB of game reduction. Now, it gets to the volume that I'm looking for. So I'm using my meters, all right? I'm using all of the, I got a, a meter over here that I check it. So I got. So most of the time, the RMS is between seven and like eight point minus 8.5. That's good, that's a good place to be in. I don't really use LUFs because I didn't use to master with LUFs before and I got good volume, so I stick with RMS. I mean, some people swear about a whole LUFs thing and I don't know, I don't really get consistent. Sometimes my LUFs will say one thing and it sounds louder or quieter than what it says, so I don't even rock with it. I don't understand what RMS means, so I use RMS. <clears throat> All right, so. See here. After I do that, next thing is I go to my EQ. So I boosted here. Uh, what's this? At 2K, 2.2K, I boosted a dB, 1.2 dB. And then at uh, 1.6K, I boosted almost 1 dB. So this is a shelf boost up here just to make it a little brighter, right? So how about we do it like this? I will turn off these bands I don't need that either 
Okay, so let's see them before and after. So you see, it's just adding some lift, it's adding some clarity, you know what I'm saying? You hear the horns more, you hear the melody a little bit more in your face, okay? And then next thing I'm looking for is mud. If I hear something that sounds like it's just muddying up my mix, I take it out a little bit. So let's see where those are. That's all the EQ I did on here. Okay, so now I have a multiband dynamics, which the uh, the ozone one is actually pretty cool because you got this uh, adaptive release thing, which is dope, and then you have this thing right here, auto. Auto basically is auto makeup gain. So any gain reduction you have on a band, it'll automatically make it up, and that way your frequency um, the frequency spectrum doesn't get out of whack. Because sometimes when you use multiband dynamics, it can mess up the frequency spectrums, make it so you have too many highs or not enough mids or or whatever. You know, then you got to rebalance it by ear. But if you had it right the first time and you're like, ah, oh, man, I shouldn't have messed with it. But ozone kind of has this little little safety thing, safety it's like dummy proof thing. Um, all you got to do is turn on uh, the auto down here and then. Get your gain reduction. I, I look to get between like 0.5 and like 1.5 dB of gain reduction on each one of these bands at different times at their own time. Okay, so check it out, and it automatically makes it uh, makes up the gain. That's pretty dope, right? So that's really about it. Like that right there gets me my master. You know, I, I do all, I, I mix through all of that and then I got this ozone on there and that shit just comes out pretty fire like that. So, so if you uh, learned something new, uh, if you liked the video, click the like button, share it with your friends and uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, also, if you got any questions, uh, type in the questions below. Uh, hopefully, I can answer them. And uh, yeah, I will see you on the next one. Peace.